When I started at law school, I didn't know where my path would lead me, Hi, but looking, looking back now, I, I am so fortunate to have the opportunity to work in the domestic violence court and to have the opportunity to save lives of individuals in our community, to save families and to help people, and to make our community safer and stronger. All rise. The Honorable Judge Carol Kelly presiding. We're going to call the bond calendar. This is to determine your conditions of release. The defendant does have priors. He have a current felony, aggravated assault, aggravated battery, false imprisonment with the same victim. All right, sir, how long have you lived in Dade County? A year. We have a video of him beating up my sister. My sister is almost dead. He's been beating on my sister for nine months. Back in 1992, a group of people in the community realized that we really weren't addressing domestic violence sufficiently. So several judges, along with community leaders, decided let's start a docket for domestic violence cases. We now have 14 judges that are just dedicated to the domestic violence division that hear civil and criminal cases both here at the main family courthouse as well as branch courts in North Dade, South Dade, Hialeah, and also the Caleb Center. Okay, the Coordinated Victims Good. Assistance Center is a one-stop center for victims. We have 39 partners that are part of this network of, of practitioners that are here to assist victims. I was living in a trailer with my, with my husband and suddenly he gets aggressive and starts hitting me and throwing me through the kitchen, grab a knife and open my C-section. It's a rough road for victims of abuse. Many of them don't know the system, they don't know what to do, where to go. Many of our clients have never even set foot into a courtroom before. Being in the courthouse, you have those feelings about being afraid, scared, you don't know if the person would harm you. The good thing about the Coordinator Victim Assistance Center is that they go with you, provide transportation, they will go for support, and that's why you need people that really wants to help you. We're going to call our judges meeting to order. Um, and we have meetings on a monthly basis with all of the judges, as well as the clerk's office, as well as our support team. See the judge in the courtroom, we just can't get on the calendar. It is important to come together to discuss issues, to discuss successes, to discuss challenges uh, on all levels. Um, we're going to start, first of all, with a report on our violations. The types of violations that we're getting mostly are um, calling and texting of a threatened nature to the petitioner. The ability to understand different cultures really comes from getting out and visiting people in their neighborhoods. So like the Joseph Caleb Center and um, you know, all around all the different places in Miami because it really is diverse. <laughs> It's a wonderful thing to have this opened and have the neighborhood um, be part of this center. It's very important that um, victims of domestic violence have local access to courthouses and particularly in a county like ours where the distance is so far between where people live and the courthouses. I, I'm a little confused here because you went in front of the judge and the judge told you to not have any contact and despite that you did. 
and you think it's a game that you can then go post all of that stuff and just not put her name in and that nobody's gonna think it's not about her? We've seen a huge increase in the number of cyber stalking and cyber harassment cases, and we had to adapt. It's an ever-changing field, and judges and everybody in the court needs to learn more about technology and the way that it's changing and the ways that it can be used to harass, stalk, and abuse others. We're here today, ma'am, on your petition for a protective order. He repeatedly kicked you and tied your hands, legs, and neck with his belts. At the hospital, he never left your side and threatened to kill you if you told anybody what happened to you. I'm gonna send you to a batterer's intervention program. It's going to include mental health evaluation and treatment if necessary, and substance abuse evaluation and treatment if necessary. Many immigrants are undocumented, so we have the whole issue of will people come to court? Will they call the police? Will they access the services that are available? For a victim of domestic violence that was born in another country, that has uh, been told over and over by an abuser that her immigration status or his immigration status um, makes them subhuman, makes them non-citizen. We come in and we tell them that that's not true. So that person with the law behind them can stand in front of a judge and say, I am being abused. From the address I see that you live in Broward, so we, I do have a list of locations. So all of our counselors get specialized training in domestic violence. Mm -hmm. We kind of have a culture where we work primarily in victim safety and make sure that we continuously project an area where offenders can focus on why they're here and how they could change, rather than external factors that got them here. What got me, you know, in court was my mouth, you know, domestic violence. Randy had to complete a 26-week batter's intervention program and also do substance abuse counseling. One of the key components to a program that's broad like this is accountability and, and really monitoring compliance. Once you start knowing yourself and stop uh, uh, denying, you know, or being in denial, you know, uh, of certain things that you, that you do, certain things that you're capable of doing, you know, then you can see the brighter light. I don't got my certificates, I don't pass everything, I'm, I'm finished with it, but I go voluntarily because, you know, it, it keeps me, it keeps me straight. It keeps me in the right path. The Domestic Violence and Sexual Assault Council of Greater Miami was created to make Miami-Dade County a better place and a safe place for all. Right? How do we reach our migrant community? How we really help people that are here that because they're not here legally are scared to report crimes to law enforcement? It's one of the few meetings that we have where all of the community partners involved in domestic violence and sexual assault cases are all at the same table at one time. What we're doing in Miami-Dade is trying to make the victims comfortable with coming to us. A lot of people look at law enforcement and say, oh, they don't care, they're, they're not going to do anything about it. We absolutely are. You're all invited any time that you'd like to come and visit us in the court. By if having just Kelly sitting with a group of people that think, that advocate, that work, that see our victims every single day. We're creating a very healthy communication process that at the end is going to affect positively are victims. All right, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we're here today for domestic violence drug court. It's my classes. I was uh, going to classes steadily on Wednesday nights, and uh, they took out the Wednesday night class completely. It was beyond my control. No, 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 it wasn't beyond your control. No, no, no. It's entirely within your control to make sure this didn't happen. The DV Drug Court was created because a large percentage of cases that were coming into the Domestic Violence Division had components of substance abuse and mental health. 
Trying to have someone complete a 26-week intensive batter's intervention program when they're dealing with a heroin addiction or severe mental health illness that's not being treated not only isn't good for them, but can cause damage to other people in that batter's intervention program. Please do not forget that there was a victim in this case. <coughs> However, you did successfully complete the program. And we have a certificate of completion for you. Judicial leadership, I think, is one of the most integral parts of putting together a domestic violence court. An interested judicial leader can bring stakeholders together. And I think Judge Kelly in particular has been able to do that and bring people together in a way that we really want to solve problems and move ahead. Who gets out of that? Nobody gets There's many wonderful people in the world. We all know that. But it, it definitely, the past 22 years has opened my eyes to man's inhumanity to man, which in many cases is just shocking what people can do to other people. And particularly in the area of people that are in their family and people they supposedly love. I'm truly honored and amazed at the great things that we can do working together. And it's exciting looking forward to the future on how we can continue to do this and continue to help people as a community, collaborating together, going forward, going strong with all the new challenges that are bound to come around the corner. <laughs>